and Fasu, the king of YouTube. I'm here on the scene at LIU with the author of a great book called The God Genes Decoded. And I'm going to let him introduce himself to you and basically let you know what he's all about and the message that he has for the people that he's going to share with us today at the lecture. Nice to meet you, brother R.A. Waldron, huh? Good afternoon. Uh, my name is R.A. Waldron, a.k.a. Baba Nuhari Mansho Hoon. Uh, the book, The God Genes Decoded, it clarifies a lot of misunderstandings that people have about ancient Kemet, ancient Egypt. Uh, you know, what I found with the Afro-Kemetic movement or Afrocentric movement, unfortunately, by and large, is really people who have been Christianized and have been colonized, and they haven't really thrown off the shackles of colonialism. So they're still trying to practice the, their ancestral way of life from a Christian or unenlightened perspective. And it's very interesting because the writing is on the wall and a lot of people in the movement can't seem to admit that they're really still under the, uh, you could say, brainwashing or brain staining of, co of colonialism. Okay. And uh, it's either you're going to admit that that's what you want to do, you want to be really following uh, a pseudo-spiritual culture, or you want to follow the wisdom of the ancients. So, you know, I'm an African traditional priest. Uh, I'm also uh, a, a Baba Lao. I've been practicing yoga for 12 years, and pranayama, kundalini yoga. All of these things are all part of what you may call voodoo. And one of the things that I also show people is that voodoo is a system of spiritual enlightenment. It's the first system of spiritual enlightenment to mankind on the planet. All of the other, uh, you could say Tai Chi or Qi Kung or Qi work and yoga and mantra chanting and the things that you find in the exterior of some of the more popular systems of spiritual cultivation, those things are also, you, you also find those things in Voodoo. The difference with Voodoo or Voodoo is that one is the first, Two is much more open in terms of enlightenment, interacting with the uh, the uh, deities. It is very secretive, and that's the way that the Neteru Loa or Orisha interact with man. And it's through a process of initiation that you are afforded the opportunity to work with these uh, forces. Outside of that, you're not you you might you might have what I might call a glass ceiling in terms of your spiritual evolution. And these are concepts that are breaking according to my art and divine law, the fact that the, the universe owns and operates itself. You don't. You can't do whatever you feel like just because you wrote a book or pick up a book or did some postures. Uh, if, if you don't have the authority from the universe itself, the very power to be, there's, there's, there is so much that you can do. So, so you have know, license. Yeah, you got you got to have a license. The universe operates according to laws, rules, and regulations. And until you prove that you're not going to break through the laws, rules, and, and regulations, you are severely limited into as to what you can do. And that's just not doing things here on planet Earth, because earthly life for human beings is just the foundation upon which we launch our spiritual evolution. You have to look towards at some point a celestial life participating in evolution on a macrocosmic scale, whether it's the formation of a new solar system, new uh, galaxy, or um, birthing your own universe. These are all concepts that have been a part of African traditional culture for you know tens of thousands of years. But because it is a secret system, uh, because it does require certain barriers that you pass with the admittance by the deities, you don't know these things. Okay, okay. How does this relate to Palo, the Palo system? Well, Palo comes directly out of the Congo, and the word Palo actually is etymologically connected to the word ba Baal. And Baal uh, in the Congo is called Onkuwe Mbale or Onkuwe Ombaala. Uh, in the Yoruba language, Baal is Ombao or on Baale, and they know that as, as ancestors in the Congo tradition, Onkuwe and Baale is the creator, and all human beings in the universe descended from Onkuwe and Baale. In ancient Kemet, Baal was worshipped as a form of Osir and a god of, god of war. 
So, you know, Baal is actually the first spirit of the Goetia. So when you're dealing with Palo, you're dealing with a very ancient, powerful uh, form of magic that deals a lot with ancestors. And there, there's other aspects of Palo that, you know, I, I really can't talk, talk about. Okay, now you said Baal with a B or P? Either or, you know, that's another thing that I teach people is really uh, how not to get too caught up in uh, pronunciation, meaning, meaning that even though we can say that the English language is a gutter language or whatnot, there's still a science to, to the letters, meaning P is obviously a soft B. That's why, you know, B has two bumps and P has one. <laughs> so while one person might say Bao, another person might say Pao. You know, and this is also where, where the word pal comes from. You know, like, pal, you are my pal, you are my friend, you are my brother, you know. And why did the Israelites make the deity named Baal their enemy? Well, you know, that really has a lot to do with conquering people that were already there who were holding on to their ancient ancestral ways. So it's not even so much that... You can't make that deity your enemy. That deity is a part of the universe. So, so you know, we are talking about scriptures and doctrines for delegitimizing people's wisdom. When, when, when you want to establish a new order and one already exists, you talk bad about it. You, you are mudsling. So, you know, people have been mudslinging for quite, quite some time. If you look at, if you even go on to uh, Google and Google the uh, books of Enoch, okay. if you are intelligent enough, you will see that the books of Enoch are an attempt by Europeans in the Middle East to make every single thing about the ancient African way of life look bad, stupid, and evil. Okay. I'm seeing like a rebirth going on. A lot of um, blacks throughout the diaspora are starting to embrace spiritual traditions like what you would call Voodoo or Palo or you know there's many names for the Kemet right. schools of thought right um any significance to this rebirth that's going on right now well I mean um if you take a people and you oppress them destroy the civ destroy the civilizations but they are still around meaning that African people have not been driven into a extinction they have not been totally annihilated at some point, especially the ancestors are going to work towards their living members in the flesh to re-embrace their uh, culture. You, you, really, you know, empires are built on people. People are built on ideas. Religions are what form empires. So if, if you want to have a strong nation, you need people who are who identify under the same so-called religion or, or ideology. So that, that, that rebirth is like an ancestral call to come back home. Okay. You know, uh, we really can't build uh, ourselves back if people are uh, identifying themselves with the system that the Europeans have developed. So, you know, that is an ancestral calling back to you know, asking people to come back to their family, really what it is, so that they can be prosperity, so that they can be health, so that they can be wealth. Which we need right now more than ever, you know? Right, and you know, what is really going to help this movement or this rebirth to uh, take off is employing very, very powerful spiritual forces, is uh, we need people who are academics and scholars in terms of expressing this wisdom and showing people how critical it is to the evolution of their own personal consciousness, to building strong families, to uh, economic safeguarding or protection against, you know, the uh, cap capitalism. So, you know, like I would tell people, e economics is warfare. So, you know, you're not just going to get people to re-embrace this uh, wisdom and form powerful nations without having the oppressor try all types of things to undermine them. And they've already set and laid a whole lot of ideological traps that stop people from getting back to the ancient ancestral wisdom. 
you know, if you read the book, The Pedagogy of the Press, it, it, it actually explains a lot of what we see going on, with, even with the, with, with the rebirth of these ancient systems, where there really isn't an organized, even centralized rebirth. It's this person here, that person here, trying to do their own thing. Eventually, that, that, that has to form itself into an organized harmonic uh, unit, you know, okay. whether it's an interfaith system, uh, whether we call it ATR, whether we call it the Doom, whether we call it the Afro-Committed Movement, whether, whether, whether we call it the Afro-Conscious Movement, it has to coalesce into something that's very, very distinct, uh, that the members say, you know, we, this is what we are, what we are a part of, and it has to then build communities like what the Dutch almost have, what the uh, what the Orthodox Jews have, you know, what the, the what the what the Mormons have. You okay. know, until you get to that point, you really haven't reached a major goal in terms of uh, restoring Black people to their prominent role on the planet. Mm -hmm. Well, I appreciate this. This video is about 11 minutes, right? But to show you how time works, a thousand years could be a day. A day could be like a thousand years. And the information that you just gave in this last 11 minutes takes us back at least 40,000 years. You get what I'm saying? Like, we're living in a big time warp right now. Right. We can play with time. We can manifest our own destiny with the right information and guidance from people such as yourself. So I appreciate that, man. And keep up the good work, man. Keep Thank working you. for the light, man. Thank you. All right? All right. Cool. Bless. R.A. Waldron, author of The God Genes Decoded. Peace. Peace. Thank you, Walter.